We are outside Commissioner Marion Green's house, who's also the chair. Uh, she set this meeting up with us for today at 10 o'clock. Uh, she refused to have it socially distanced on her porch, so we had the Zoom meeting from her porch. We heard from the unhoused union leaders um, with what they've been going through, what is the current situation at the extended stay. How it is that you can sit here in your comfortable home and have no worries, no sleepless night, no sweat off your brow when it comes to so many people being displaced, so many people that have to reside outside. She responded with call the Shelter Connect line. Um, there is an after hours number, but Shelter Connect does not open until 10 a.m. You can Google that for yourself. I encourage everybody to call that phone number so you can hear for yourself that there are no beds. There are not enough beds for the people that are within the hotel system. With uh, In total, the hotels, there's over 70 folks there. There's not enough room for the 200 plus people that are on the Greenway. And there's still one or two parks that are still quasi uh, operational. I know that the answers that I have are not satisfactory. They're not answers. I but you knew that, that you knew that your uh, statement. That doing a lot with existing shelter space and also working hard to- There is no existing shelter space. Because I think that's really, you know, as others have shared, ultimately our goal. She could have told us this last week. So this meeting was all for show. The city had to have a meeting to amend their budget because we were negative 250 million this summer. So they had to reallocate funds and put them where, they're, where it's needed to balance that budget out. So the county has the ability to do the exact same thing. I pointed that out to her. She could call an emergency meeting um, to vote on reallocating that budget to fund the hotels until they can purchase hotels. Y'all can have the same meeting to call an emergency meeting to amend the budget That's and right. reallocate funds. So don't give me this mess that y'all can't do anything because this is Samantha Priestens in here who's been on hunger strike for six days occupying out front. They were supposed to purchase the extended stay for a little over 13 million. Um, that deal fell through because Marion said it was complicated. Um, so at this point, the unhoused do not have any place to go. If they stay at the extended stay, they're likely to be arrested. If they go into the parks, they will be trespassed and arrested. Uh, if they stay out here in front of her house, I'm sure eventually they'll say that this is not a protest and that it is an occupation and more people will get arrested, which then increases the risk for COVID and obviously is additional trauma on people that are just asking for their basic human needs to be met. I feel that this meeting was, um, it was undignified. It was dehumanizing. She's further digging in her heels and stepping into her supremacy by refusing to do the right thing and do her job. And then at the same time, trying to dupe people by not telling them what the process is to actually move some funds um, and to call an emergency crisis on housing. So something must be done. We have to keep the pressure on. We will be door knocking to engage neighbors and let them know about this issue to put additional pressure. We plan to knock the whole district. Um, city elections are next year, county elections are next year, so we have the ability, we have opportunities to get people of the people in these positions so that they do the right thing. We have a community budget um, and we have a community agenda that we start pushing instead of their personal pet projects and their personal interests from the developers um, and other organizations that fund their campaigns so that they're beholden to them and not to the people.